uh, in 2016, uh, you were really ill. Um, I read that your family got told that you possibly you know, weren't going to make it. I don't think I realised how much it, it really sort of shaped what was to come next. Like, I don't think I would have ever got into music without having that experience. Because- One. This is Bronny. Every Wednesday from 6pm. The Bronny Show on KCC Live. What's up, you guys? You are listening to The Bronny Show, and I'm joined here with the amazing Pixie. How's it going? Hello. So you are from Liverpool? Yeah, I mean, I'm what people would consider a wall because I'm actually, um, I wasn't born in Liverpool. I I will admit that. But I was born and raised in Lancashire, but then I've been in in Liverpool for school basically all my life. Right, yeah. Well, you do have the accent for it, so... uh... I, yes. I wouldn't uh, say you're a war. So, no, it's like me because I'm from the Wirral. So it's like when I go on holiday, I'm like, people are like, where are you from? And I'm like, the Wirral, but Liverpool because no one's yeah. heard of the Wirral. No, no one's, no one's heard of like Carbold, which is actually the original tiny town where I'm from. Right. We have a hill and a canal. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Um, shout out people from Marvel. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, Liverpool's like definitely the place that most people know of if you tell mm-hmm. them you're from there. It just kills so much like confusion. <laughs> you're just like, Liverpool. Totally. So since September, you released three new singles, the latest single called Electric Dream. So how did those songs come to be? Did you write them in lockdown or were they songs or ideas that you had for quite a while? Yeah, so... Um, I actually, I I wasn't signed this time last year and that's when I started writing most of my tunes for my upcoming EP. So the first song I wrote was Just Move. And they kind of actually, in almost the chronological order, like I wrote Just Move and then I wrote um, Free Southern Colour. Well, I was working on that one and and then I wrote Electric Dream. Um, So I was feeling quite, you know, pent up. I was trying to find an outlet to write I, I was getting I would I had just got a whole load of like new gear and stuff as well so I was really trying to push like my song right in my production and that's how these songs just kind of they sort of formed in the first lockdown really amazing so I love the music video to just move it's sick uh you got uh, moved you. as well <laughs> you know what's so funny about that video it was the hottest day of the year right and obviously COVID protocol a lot of people in masks mm-hmm. um it was really like i can't think it was i think it was like 38 degrees or 37 degrees down in bristol no it wasn't not 38 28 <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's like death that's valley like, like, that's, like, that's like no no 28 degrees but it was still hot no 32 jesus christ but yeah it was hot and i was um i was basically because I, I knew i wanted like a, a dance centric video where i was going to be moving um to the groove and like to the beat of, of the tune which is what i wrote it about so um i was there in like a full-blown suit like glittery suit mm-hmm. and um i just remember like at one point i was like i am gonna die <laughs> I was like, this is, i'm so hot but um it was such a blast and it actually you can't tell i don't think on the video it's it's very glittery and shimmery mm-hmm. so you can't actually see like just the the sweat just looks like glitter at the end you know <laughs> it added it added to the situation of anything <laughs> amazing. amazing to all the people who aren't as familiar with you which i'm sure they will be after this interview um so tell the <laughs> listeners more about yourself you know what's your vibe are there any certain bands or artists that inspire you you know musically aesthetically yeah so like if you don't know me which you shouldn't <laughs> i'm kidding like <laughs> i i am um, i basically i'm all about like big sort of break beats um but like little hooks and riffs mm-hmm. um and i like my music although like a lot of them they're quite beat like break beat and sort of like prodigy style you know in your face sort of drums um i like it to also be like quite melodic and and for my songs to to tell a story or like to just give an instruction or or you know kind of I, i'm really into soundscapes and stuff like that as well so there's always little bits and bobs that i'm always throwing in my my tunes that you can you can dig out and let me know you can you can hear them because often they're always like little hidden nuggets in my tunes but um i record write everything um and produce it in my bedroom mm-hmm. um i always have so i'd say that's like a good kind of like summing up of, of how i make my tunes and, and what i make um i'm really into um george harrison not and i always say this not got my mindset on you <laughs> not that song <laughs> i do love the album all things must pass i think mm-hmm. that's just the best album going it's like one of my favorites and that was such a big inspiration to my music as a kid still is now um and i love beck i love sample heavy songs de la soul 
definitely my vibe, you know, like dead summery, dead sort of like chopped up and and whacked together in like just this mad tune. Like that's my way that I like Amazing. to write and produce and record. So yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's awesome. So I saw on Instagram, you call yourself the, the indie Britney Spears. I'm so here for that. <laughs> I love it. Have you, have you, you know? seen a live before or anything or? No, I just think <laughs> as a kid, right? I was obsessed with Britney Spears and I yeah. swear it's like it's always resonated I'm not resonated it's just the after effects of that have always been in my life I think that's why I always have blonde hair it's just one of those things like when you're a kid and you someone is such a big pop star and you yeah. just kind of look up to them so much like I don't think they ever really leave you you know she's a she was such an icon for me as a kid it's amazing and w when I was a kid I was like when I grow up, I want to be, I want to be Britney, Shania Twain, Shakira and Avril Lavigne. I was like, I just want to be them mashed. Yep. And I was like, yep. why, why did I say Shakira? My hips do lie. <laughs> like what? <It's> just... <laughs> Honestly, I, oh my God, there's probably a really embarrassing video of this somewhere. But I remember for a, um, a year six talent show, me and my friends, um, I think, was, I don't know if it was Hips Don't Lie or um, Whenever or Wherever. Mm -hmm. Oh, what, whatever it's called, and, and we did like we wore like the whole, you know, sort of like Shakira skirt, yeah, and like and like kind of like risque crop top. <laughs> we did like dance to it, Amazing. and we won. Actually, we won. And um, it's just like I always looked up to those kind of artists though as a kid, you know, because it just rammed down your throat, I guess. But I mean, I love I love a good female pop star. I just think it would be cool to like kind of rewrite what they are in a modern sense. Totally, um, I especially think, especially in great. the indie world. Like, yeah, I'd love to be something like that. Amazing. And and for me, my favourite, I don't want to say genre of music because it's not a certain one, but my favourite as a time of music was female pop rock. Like, you know, when like yeah. Miley Cyrus was kind of rocky, Kelly Clarkson, <laughs> Avril, that is my favourite time. I just love yeah. that whole vibe. Do you ever feel like, because when you're a kid, like those songs are always just around you, like everywhere, everywhere mm -hmm. you go, like, especially, you know, like Natasha Bedingfield as well. She was a yes. huge one I used to be obsessed with. Um, but like, they, I don't think they ever leave you. And sometimes even if you don't listen to it now, like it's kind of still there. <laughs> sometimes when I write, I'm like, this sounds like something. And then I'm like, Jesus Christ, this sounds like Fergie. Yeah, <laughs> you'll turn like on that. like, now that's what I call 2006 oh, just, or whatever. And it's like, oh my God. I love it. <laughs> I used to collect those CDs. I think I still have them all somewhere, yeah. you know, like in just the massive, that was what you bought, wasn't it? You went to the shop and like, oh, you totally. saw the new now, now that's what I call music, blah, de blah. And I used to wear, uh, I used to get that, but my first CD that I ever bought was uh, Britney Spears in Zone. Uh, Amazing. It was my favourite CD, and uh, I used to listen to it on repeat constantly. <laughs> Download oh, onto my great. computer. <laughs> oh yeah, so I used fun. to um, hold my phone up to the speakers and have that as my ringtone in like year six, and I'd be oh, like, "Yep, yeah, does everyone does everyone uh, want to you know pay me one p for this song?" I'd, I'd literally <laughs> yeah. trade like you know kids when they uh, when they buy a load of chocolate bars and all that and sell them in school. I, yeah. I was trading stuff on Bluetooth. I was like, yeah. You were way ahead of the game. I know. <laughs> like as a child. Little That's entrepreneur. Amazing. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah amazing. Bluetooth days. Oh gosh. Oh. I used to go uh, I used to go to the foot, uh, the footy match and stuff and I used to go on Bluetooth and just check everyone around like all their usernames. Oh, yeah, me too. Gosh. Oh god, I can't even remember what my username used to be. I think it was something like Little rock star one two three or something like yeah. that was what oh that's I mean this is we're getting really personal and deep here into my <laughs> childhood <laughs> like this is triggering something in me but Amazing. I remember like that stupid crazy frog thing or that that bird that used to go tweet tweet or whatever yeah like, <laughs> everyone used to send those on the on the like flip um flip phones on the, on the flip I, I, phones I never had a flip phone I was gutted oh man you missed I that just had, I, I just had a oh. brick oh no that's a, that's a I know. Do you I know wasn't how, cool like, I'm, oh I had. To be fair, I remember like when I was really young and my parents wouldn't let me have a phone and I had like a flippy calculator and I convinced everybody that it was a mobile phone. Yeah. And I used to play this like this uh, this ringtone on it. Um, but it was just because it was just like a, a fancy kids <laughs> calculator. And I used to go in and I used to click the ringtone and go, hello. Hello. Or <laughs> well, like typing you know in um, 80085, like <laughs> it says boobs. <laughs> <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. <laughs> so oh. let's let's play a music game. This is Would You Rather Musician Edition. Would you rather? 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 
So I'm going to ask you three would you rather questions. So cue, cue the serious music. Number one, we have, would you rather never play an instrument again or never mm. sing and songwrite ever again? Oh my God. Um, Jeez. I would say I'd rather never play an instrument again because singing and songwriting is like the pinnacle, I guess, of like sharing emotion. <laughs> totally, yeah, it's your like, forte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. screw the screw the guitar. Like I'd much rather, much rather sing. Fabulous. Oh, so <laughs> would you, number two is, would you rather mm-hmm. play sold out 50 cap rooms all over the world in crazy intimate venues uh, and play whenever you can? or mm-hmm. play half-filled stadiums around the world, but you can only play them five times a year? Um, do you know what? I think I'd go for the half-filled stadium because I think, I don't know whether a lot of other musicians feel like this, but there's nothing more intimidating than a small intimate venue. Like I just get- And everyone's eyes are on that you. gets me. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes, I'd much rather play like a, you know, to hundreds of thousands of people. I, I would be less nervous than I think playing to like six people in a room where they're just like watching everything. Totally. <laughs> it's like everything. You run on like, stage and you just see ants. So it's like, you yeah, can't yeah. see anyone's faces. It's great. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely the stadium. <laughs> Amazing. And number three, you can only listen to one decade's worth of music forever. What decade <laughs> are you gonna pick? The nineties, obviously. Mm-hmm. I I love the nineties. I think I take so much of my sound from that era. So I don't think I'd miss. I know I'd miss other music, but I could easily live with just the nineties music. Good choice, good choice. So you released your EP Colors in 2019. Uh, I love the first song, Supersonic Love. Oh, it's a tune um, and the closing song young uh, which i believe got a lot of traction from radio which is awesome it, yeah, yeah. It did. so what milestones have you hit since releasing that ep so it was a really interesting one with that ep because it was completely self-released so which is kind of unusual in this day and age i guess if, if you've kind of already had that kind of radio play but it was a decision i made um because i just wanted to do it and i wanted to see what i could achieve like on my own um, so off the back of that, I really just wanted to then create something that I thought was um, like the next, like the next evolution of that kind of music. So um, I kind of honed in on those breakbeat sounds, but I still kept it quite poppy for the CP, I would say. Um, but I would say like the milestones that I've hit, I mean, you know, it's funny because everything's relative nowadays, isn't it? So like you look at like Lady Gaga and you're like, wow, <laughs> <She went simple. laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, that's like a milestone, but like, even when you're starting out, these small milestones are so important. Like, you know, getting playlisted um, for BBC Introducing, that's always amazing. Um, being picked up uh, by Jack Saunders on Radio 1, that was a really sick milestone. That's His awesome, yeah. show is just, yeah, he's fantastic. Um, getting to work with producers who are like co-prod and stuff like that, that I, that I literally look up to their songs. Um, I mean, James Drink, who co-produced my upcoming EP. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did people like, you know, the Gorillas and Lana Del Rey and, and Jamie T. So that was really fucking insane that he was then like working on my tunes. Um, but it was so cool as well. And Congrats just in general, that. like, oh, it's, it's sick. But just in general, I think like um, getting signed after that first EP was such a big shift for me in my career, which has been, it's just been the best thing in the world. Oh, amazing. Well, congratulations on that. Um, so I was looking at some old interviews with you and I found that no. uh, in 2016, uh, you were really ill. Um, I read that your family got told that you possibly you know, weren't gonna make it. So how, how has that changed your life? Uh, what, what was going through your head at your worst point and what was going through your head when things started to get better? Yeah, it's like, it's so crazy because it's funny because after that happened, I didn't really think about it too much because the music came along. But then I don't think I realized how much it it really sort of shaped what was to come next. Like, I don't think I would have ever got into music without having that experience, because I I guess when you live every day thinking that you're guaranteed another one, you don't ever consider the fact that, you know, that might not happen. Mm-hmm. So when I was when I was taken into hospital, um, I was really, really sick. My temperature was like ridiculously high I was really um delirious quite delusional as well because I just didn't know what was going on like going on Mm -hmm. um and I was also on a lot of morphine (laughs) which is crazy (laughs) and I just remember like 
I don't think I realized how serious it, it was until um, I got moved to like a neuro hospital where they were testing me for a brain hemorrhage, basically a subarachnoid brain hemorrhage. And I remember that night my temperature was through the roof um, and they were really worried. I think that my organs were starting to fail uh, and I, I just, they couldn't keep it down. It, it was just really out of control mm-hmm. um, no matter what they were doing. I remember everybody around me looked so freaked out. My parents weren't in the room at the time. They were taken into the other room. And I remember like, I think I'd, I remember seeing the looks on their faces and like the, the nurse was desperately telling me like not to panic she was like don't panic please this is making it like it will make it worse I was like oh great yeah, yeah. <laughs> no pressure yeah <laughs> no pressure yeah just don't panic please. you might die but the, the thing is they don't tell like they didn't tell me at all I knew I was I knew I was bad though I remember in that, that moment I just thought like how much I hadn't done and I, I was like you know I'm so young <laughs> I was only I hadn't I was 20 at the time so you know, I didn't feel like I'd done anything that I wanted to do. And I remember thinking, like, if I get out of this, this needs to change. But then thinking, oh, my God, I feel really bad. I should probably just let go, which is such a weird feeling when you come to terms with that. And you're like, OK, like this is happening. Um, and it's weird. Your body goes into this weird state of like calm and where you don't like it's it's really strange, it, like overrides the sort of like panic that you think you'd be feeling. But then every time that happened, like there's another part of me that was like, no, I don't want to die. On, I don't yeah. want to die. Like, yeah, like, like this is this isn't my time. Like, I've not done anything I wanted to do. Um, what will my family be, like feel like? And it's weird because although like I was totally like delirious and delusional, um, I still had those quite lucid thoughts. Mm-hmm. And then off the back of that, um, when I got through that, because they managed to bring my um, my temperature down. Um, I remember just thinking like, right, I need to just do something. I need to make the most of my life. Like I yeah. need to do something that I love um, because what's the point otherwise, you know? Like there, there is no point. And it's weird because as you start getting older, um, I, I just kind of thought that every everything was, I was going to grow old and like, and I was going to have a family and I was going to have a job and that's the way it's supposed to be. But then I just realized like actually anything can happen. Like anything can be thrown at you. Even totally. you know, you're not you're not exempt from, Book from the anything. System and do your own thing, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and I think when I realized something as bad as that could happen mm. to me, I was like, well, <laughs> maybe something good could happen too. So I yeah. went and I started recording. And it was the same year, I think, later on in that year, that Young got playlisted on Radio One. So it was just absolutely mental year. And it went from like being one of the worst years of my life. It's one of the best. Yeah, so, that's that's all. Awesome. But that was a decision I made. Like it, it was a decision coming off the back of that though. Like that I decided like that's that's it. I need to do that. And like once I decided that, there was kind of like no stopping me from there. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, that's amazing to hear. Um, and I take Thanks. it you know like most artists, you've been probably singing your whole life. Um, so I, I started out doing musical theatre, and from that I kind of found rock bands and got into singing. So how, how did that happen for you? Was there a certain age you you know discovered that oh I really really want to do this um or even have it as a hobby or any certain bands or artists that made you go right this is what I want to do yeah so like I was always as a kid like music music was always on my radar my mom's a piano teacher um although it's kind of funny (laughs) because I just like refused to let her teach me (laughs) just drove (laughs) up the wall but um I think uh, like as I got older it just I don't know what it is maybe it was like being where I was at the time um especially like from the small town that I was growing up in like Liverpool felt like anything could happen there you know you're in a city it's famous for its music and musicians um and I felt like after I really kind of cemented myself in the pool that's when it felt more possible but before that you know I don't really have anybody to look up to like locally that made me feel like that was that was possible so Mm -hmm. I think when I started to reach out and look at other artists like Grimes who was producing her own stuff at the time I was like well why can't I do that you know like it's 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 totally possible if I wanted to be so you know but that came so late on like everybody it's so funny because I see you know people really young and they're like it's 16 or 17 and they're already like leagues ahead of me which is so I have so much respect for that that takes a lot of like maturity to do that mm-hmm. but um like for me it wasn't like that at all like it took a very long time <laughs> to get my identity to know what I wanted and I was in you know I'm in my mid-20s now but like this was only like three or four years ago so yeah. it's you know it's been like a 
I've had to almost catch up on like what 10 years of what other people have had you know I, I only just learned to play the guitar after my illness same with the drums same with the bass same with production so I was only really a singer and a piano player and the odd bit of acoustic guitar played absolutely terribly beforehand. Classic um, chords like G C E minor D, like <laughs> oh, honestly, like Damien Rice, <laughs> you know, like a totally different vibe. But you know, like my discovery of, of wanting to be like a singer songwriter producer, songwriter producer came way later on, like you know, in my twenties already, which is kind of unusual, really. A lot of, you see a lot of people start out, you know, quite young, like. Like, like they, they they can play the guitar behind their head, you know, when they're like oh, it's eight or nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like it was it was nice in a way that um I decided that like and then I went for it. And then that That's was awesome, like yeah. it just came really quickly. Oh totally. Yeah. So this section of the interview is Song of the Week. Song of the week, song of the week. So this is a fun thing I like to do with everyone. So it's time to choose your song of the week. It can be a song that changed your life, a guilty pleasure, a song by your favourite band or artist. What is the song? So I always say this, but this is one of my favourite tunes of all time. Oh, but it's just so, no, I can can do better than that. I love, see, I just love the verve. I always say this in every every podcast. Amazing. I love the verve, but like Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah, you can't beat that song. I was, I mean, you know, I was saying something the other day. Like when I, whenever I go down to London, I just imagine I'm in that music video and I'm like walking. Totally, in slow you walk around yeah. just, in slow motion, like the rain all black and white. Down. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Well, like, please tell me if you're listening that you do that as well. That you like imagine <laughs> that you're in music videos. But I love that song. I mean, I know it's like a Stones, um, <laughs> Stones riff, but I think it's just one of the greatest songs of all time. That's amazing. I, I certainly agree. Uh, so you, mm-hmm. you basically do everything yourself. I saw, you know, you love producing and writing. So do you come up with most of your, uh, you know, writing concepts and music videos yourself? So, yeah. So, like, um, since since I've been, like, signed on, on the label, um, the first mu- music video just moved. That was, like, a, a collab between me and Dan, um, Dan Broadley, who directed it. And he was, like, he gave me a treatment. I was, like, me. Um, and then we kind of rehashed it out and then he made it happen, which was so cool because like I wanted it like all black colours and that was kind of like very me. Mm-hmm. And then for my second music video um, that was directed by Tommy Davis, I kind of just took a step back and I was like, you know what? I want to see what you envision for me uh, and like, and we'll see how it all comes. Obviously I styled myself, um, <laughs> interestingly. Amazing. <laughs> I don't know, like that was uh, very much me, but like the direction and everything was Tommy, which I thought was fucking sick because it came out so like so dreamy and ethereal and you know it was quite nice for somebody else to kind of take the reins and and show me a different side of what you know my aesthetic looks like but in terms of songwriting like um I would say that I I mean all the songs are are, like completely concept like my conceived (laughs) by me like you know they're like well they're they're my brainchild and then I put it out um and that's the power of production like when you have that like skill because you can show people how you want it Sounds to sound you want yeah that they potentially yeah yeah it's it's such a big part of the process that people forget instead um, of just, not sending, just like levels like like yeah like instead of just sending a reference track you can go right this is literally what i want so it's, exactly it like it makes the process yeah. 10 times quicker it makes it quicker but it also makes it more like unique as well because you know you're not just being like i want to sound like Blah blah. Who sounds great, but they've got their own sound. You know. You totally, know yeah. You want to be that's you. That's a Lana Del Rey song, or like, you, yeah, exactly. You know when it's, you know, I don't know, like a disclosure song. Like they've got their little stamps on their own music. So I wanted to give that. Some, like, I wanted that too, but but for me, and the only way I could do that was by having like my control over some of my production. So, and obviously because I'm not trained, uh, it was then like a great idea to get really experienced producers. Uh, production producers God, can't speak. producers and also um mixers and, and masters who then just like lifted my tracks up and they just brought things out that I didn't a have the knowledge or the experience to do but also you know the gear but now like it's great because every time I've worked with a different producer I've like you know I'll take, take a bit of that yeah, yeah I'll take a bit of that but like they you know you learn so much from watching other people um, and it's just so important for your growth, I think, is like to not be afraid to like welcome people into your into your world. And and also like as a female producer and songwriter, it can be easy to feel like 
like you don't know what you're doing you know what I mean and like you you are desperate to keep that creative control Mm -hmm. but um like for the longest time I wouldn't let anybody touch my music because I was like no I'm gonna do it like I'm not gonna ask for help but then when I did like it just taught me so much and then I realized how it can make your tracks you know so much better and actually you you start to learn that stuff that they've they've helped you with and then you can step it up even more so I would say like that's like the general vibe of what's you know of what I've been feeling about Mm -hmm. my production and stuff lately amazing so we have our last game this is two truths i love these One sorry <laughs> it's great it's great okay, yeah yeah girl. they have they have their own uh, theme tunes as well so when it airs it's gonna be all like two truths one night which all I love it. <laughs> sick two truths one lie 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 all right so number one we have Olivia Rodrigo, with her song Driver's License, was the first song to go to number one in America in 2021. And then we have number two. Lewis Capaldi uh, sold more albums than Harry Styles in the UK in 2020 and 2019. Number three, Fleetwood Mac's album Rumours sold more albums than Whitney Houston's The Bodyguard soundtrack. Which one is the one? Oh my God. Um... Oh my god, I'm so bad at these. I'm gonna say maybe that like Lewis Capaldi. I'm gonna maybe that's a lie. I can imagine Harry Styles would sell more than Lewis Capaldi. Sorry, well, Lewis. you are wrong. It was number oh, one. God. Was it? it yeah. Really? It, well, it, the, the first uh, the first number one song in America 2021 was Wham with Last Christmas, followed by Little oh, Mix. Oh my gosh. And now Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, sorry, Lewis. Probably. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I think about his music. <laughs> Love it. Joking. Oh, Amazing. Okay. So, so 2021, what are your next plans? Do you have any, oh, you know, obviously you've got the EP. Are there any more music videos on the horizon? Anything else? Um, so obviously the EP is coming out on the 24th of March, which I'm absolutely buzzing for. It's going to be, it's going to be great. But I mean, anybody who knows me knows me how much I write so I'm constantly writing constantly doing stuff I have like the craziest now backlog of music amazing that I'm just dying to share but you know the great thing about it is like I don't have to share it if I don't want to but I've got so much that it's like well what am I gonna do with this so I would say um definitely I hate this term but like watch this space because I think there will be <laughs> more stuff coming sooner than you expect um can't say for sure about anything yet but um there is stuff uh it is like semi done some of it so yeah oh, exciting. it's gonna be sick it's gonna be good amazing exciting. well thank you very much for coming on the show so where can people yeah. find you on social media so um you can find me on instagram uh i am pixie pixie spelled p-i-x-e-y <laughs> everybody gets it wrong um and i'm not pixie lot either <laughs> <laughs> and also you can find me on spotify pixie pxy again uh, i think other stuff is just like pixie official just type in pixie and you'll find me um yeah i'm always doing crazy shite <laughs> on my instagram <laughs> so if that's Amazing. what you like tune in <laughs> hell yeah awesome well thank you very much for coming on the show you're welcome thank you so much for having me it's been such a pleasure this is bronnie on KCC Live. Follow Bronnie everywhere at Bronnie Music. <laughs>